HMO, POS, EPO, and PPO. What is the difference? My name is Dylan Jenkins, and I help educate people on how to be better consumers in this very confusing world of health insurance by getting the same services that you need, just at the lowest out-of-pocket cost possible. If you're a business owner who offers group health insurance that is frustrated with what feels like the never-ending increase to your premium year after year, I guarantee you my team and I have solutions that can help. That said, let's jump in. An HMO stands for Health Maintenance Organization, which requires you to choose a primary care physician and get referrals to see specialists. A POS, or point of service plan, offers more flexibility, allowing you to see out-of-network providers at a higher cost. An EPO, or exclusive provider organization, offers a middle ground, covering care within a network, but without requiring referrals. That said, you sadly cannot use out-of-network providers unless you pay 100% out of pocket. Finally, a PPO, or preferred provider organization, provides the most flexibility, allowing you to see any provider you want, but with higher costs for out-of-network care. And unless the specialist you're seeing is world-renowned, or you have a tremendous relationship with them, and they know your health history, or they straight up just don't accept insurance, everyone watching this video should be doing everything that they can to stay in network. Now, let's talk about the four main building blocks of any given health insurance plan. Deductibles, co-insurance splits, co-pays, and out-of-pocket maximums. Deductible is an amount you pay out of pocket before your insurance kicks in, also referred to as co-insurance. Co-insurance is the amount of the bill that you are responsible for and what the insurance carrier is responsible for and what they'll pay. Usually after you hit your deductible, unless your plan does not have a deductible or maybe your employer covers the cost up to your deductible, your co-insurance may be active at the beginning of your plan year. Copays are pretty easy. These are fixed amounts that you pay for certain services like doctor's visits or prescriptions. And lastly, out-of-pocket maximums are the most that you'll have to pay in a calendar year for covered healthcare services. Think of this like a safety net. Once you hit this specific number, you are covered at 100% by the carrier, meaning no out-of-pocket cost for you until your plan resets at renewal time. Keep in mind, you might have two different plan options to choose from, a qualified high deductible health plan or better known as an HSA style plan where every healthcare service you receive goes towards your plan's deductible and its out of pocket maximum or a non-qualified health plan that has co-pays for certain services and only a few things require you to first meet your deductible before your co-insurance kicks in. Rest assured, in both plan options, all healthcare services received and the costs and payments that you make will be going towards your plan's out-of-pocket maximum. Now, let's break it down a little further because these are usually confusing. A qualified high deductible health plan usually has every possible service applied towards its deductible, meaning you must reach that first before the plan pays anything, such as paying full costs for the allowed charge or the negotiated contract rate for things like office visits, which are usually around $100 to $150 per visit, specialist visits that might be $200 to $300 per visit, and then emergency room visits that could be $1,000 and up. Really just depends on what you're going for. And second, a non-qualified health plan, or simply put, what most folks think is a regular health plan, usually has co-pays for those same services. Like office visits might be a $10 to $40 copay per visit, specialists might be $20 to $80 per visit, emergency rooms might be $200 to $400, it really all just depends on your specific health plan. That said, only some services apply towards your deductible, not everything. Like getting things like blood work or advanced imaging, like CT scans or MRIs, and after you meet your deductible, those specific services may have co-insurance splits like 80-20, meaning the insurance carrier will pay 80% if you stay in network to get your MRI, and you would be required to pay 20%. We can all agree that health insurance can get confusing very fast. That is why you need to educate yourself or have someone you can reach out to to ask these questions before getting some of these services done if you can. For employers and their employees uh, that I host group education sessions with, I usually paint this picture for them. 
If you're driving your car and it was running low on gas and you saw a gas station where it was $20 a gallon versus the gas station five miles down the road was $4 a gallon, I would like to think everyone would make the smart consumer decision and go to the pump where you're paying $4 a gallon. However, the mass majority of us are paying $20 a gallon when it comes to our health care, and we don't even know it. Depending on who your carrier is, they most likely have a price transparency tool where you can log on to your member portal and see for yourself firsthand. I honestly challenge you guys to go on there and type in the cost of an MRI within the 10 mile radius of your home address, and I guarantee you'd be shocked at the price differences. It's absolutely ridiculous. Now, I'll just give you an example. I dislocated my shoulder maybe eight, nine years ago. I went to the emergency room, I got an x-ray, and then when meeting with my specialist, he was reviewing the images, and I told him it had dislocated twice, one obviously at the initial injury, and the second being at night when I tried rolling from my side to my back. Uh, and when he was reviewing the x-ray images, he said, well, you know, the bone looks good, however, I need to do an MRI so that I can see what's going on in the tendons and the tissues around your shoulder. If I was a better you know, consumer, better educated, I would have went home and I could have looked up the cost of getting that MRI at the hospital that you recommended versus a non-hospital imaging center that would have been in network that just simply cranks out MRIs all day long, uh, which by the way can be a cost variance of uh, 725%. I later looked up those different costs and the hospital MRI was $3,500 and the imaging center was $400 same image with or without joint contrast, whatever your specialist puts in. My point is we're paying the higher of the two costs and we don't even know it as consumers. So if you have any questions or maybe even an upcoming procedure, I would love to help you guys. Throw a comment in the section below and we can definitely connect offline. But for now, thank you for sticking around and I will see you guys in the next Benefits Pulse video. Take care.